thank you for inviting me. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. And um, I'd like to begin by saying that I agree with everything that Nancy said. And um, I hope uh, the Museum of Anthropology will be following a kind of a similar direction to the Museum of, uh, of, of Vancouver. Um, I'm also going to begin with a little bit about our history, um, because I think, again, it will explain what we're doing um, at the moment. Uh, the museum, according to its official history, was founded in 1949, um, and uh, the first director uh, was Harry Hawthorne, and his wife, um, Audrey, uh, as, as you probably all know by now, was the first uh, curator. Now, when it was founded, um, there was a collection that already existed at the university, and uh, a very, a very important collection, um, which was a collection of um, Pacific Island material. And um, this collection, in fact, um, formed the nucleus of what later became the Museum uh, of Anthropology. Um, at the time when Audrey took over, the idea initially was to create a museum of world arts and world cultures and to show um, uh, students, uh, to expose students to different styles, um, different civilizations through their craft work and through their artistic productions. Um, the Pacific Island material was soon um, uh, complemented by Northwest Coast material. And uh, at the same time, um, Audrey uh, actively added to the um, Asian collections. So we have quite large Asian collections. Today, of course, the museum is known for its Northwest Coast collections. Um, the Northwest Coast collections, however, comprise only 25% approximately of our total holdings. Um, we have about 40%, uh, which comes to something like 16,000 objects uh, from Asia, mainly from China, India, um, also from Korea and Japan. Uh, we have um, about six or seven percent of the collection is Pacific Island, including one small collection, which is the oldest collection of Pacific Island material uh, in Canada. And uh, we have uh, something like 3,000 pieces from Africa. Um, of late, we've started to um, put together or build, I guess, or, or probably consolidate and make some sense out of what was a Latin American collection. And of course, although when it was first um, accepted by the museum, uh, the European ceramics collection, the Kerner collection, uh, it, there was a lot of debate as to whether that should be accepted or not, since we were supposedly an anthropology museum. And what does European ceramics have to do with anthropology? Luckily, we accepted that um, collection, which I think is one of the great decisions in the museum's history, because, um, of course, what anthropology doesn't make any distinction between the West and non-West any longer. And certainly Europe and America are just as much key areas of interest as, um, as Africa or, 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 or Latin America. So a lot of the work that we've been doing, um, I kind of have often defined it as really getting back to our original principles and taking the museum um, um, or, or, or chiding the museum to, um, to again become a museum of world arts and cultures. And uh, as, I've, um, uh, as, as we've been working on this project, looking at Canada, what really struck me as rather peculiar, and it took me, I think, four years to realize this when I was flying back from Toronto one time about a year ago, was that there really are very few museums of world arts and cultures in Canada, whereas in the US, every major city has the arts of the world re pretty well represented. And uh, in Europe, um, ethnography collections and world art museums are, are, are also very common. Um, the collections, there are collections at the Glenbow, um, but the Glenbow has tended to focus more and more on um, Western Canada. There are collections in the Canadian Museum of Civilization in Ottawa, um, but most of those collections are in storage, and um, again, they're not really a kind of part of the key mandate of that museum. And uh, the ROM, of course, um, do have collections from all over the world, and um, uh, most important of which are 
probably the, um, their Asian collections. So again, the ROM could call themselves the Museum of um, World Arts and Cultures, but they're actually more than that, of course. They're also a natural history museum. So as we've um, been um, re reconfiguring the museum, building the extension, which is now completed, and a lot of the services that were in the museum have now been moved to the, uh, to the new wing, um, that frees up space in the existing building to create much larger um, exhibition spaces. And um, whereas we're adamant um, and resolute in the fact that uh, Northwest Coast uh, art and culture will always be at the very heart of what the museum does, the Great Hall, uh, is uh, we've, we've, we've worked on that to enhance it, to take it back to what it was originally, to restore the architectural integrity to the Great Hall. To, um, to make it more user-friendly by, um, uh, by making sure everything is labelled and, um, uh, and, and, uh, and, and thinning some of the collections out so they're, they're, they're better, you, you can appreciate them a, a lot better. Um, in, the new, in, the, in the new galleries, we'll have another 4,000 square feet, which will also be dedicated to um, the Northwest Coast. And, um, and our feeling at present is that Gallery 3, that long gallery, which used to be a masterpieces gallery, will also largely be focused on, on the northwest coast. However, what we've been able to do is come up with um, uh, 17,000, sorry, 14,500 14 square feet uh, of new gallery space, which uh, we're calling the Multiversity Galleries. And multiversity is a name that um, some, some uh, often people say to me, well, that's a difficult name. Why are you making the museums even more inaccessible? And after, I think, two nights ago, when I had to watch um, some, some, I don't know, I was calling them Minji Turtles, um, but this film about these kind of turtle heroes, uh, they, were fighting a, uh, they were fighting a villain who was a master of the multiverse. So my answer to that is, if it's, you know, if it's with children in cartoons, then it's about time it was in the, in the, in the museums too. The basic idea is that there are many ways of seeing, uh, understanding and appreciating the world. Uh, not one universe, but many universes of meaning. And in fact, um, they call the multiversity galleries and underneath ways of knowing. And what we've done with this space is um, we've taken the opportunity to bring out the collections from the rest of the world that have been um, that have been in store uh, for, a, for, for a long time. We've um, divided this area, not so much by continent, but by oceans. And the reason we've done this is because we wanted to emphasize the relationship between different parts of the world. And we wanted to look at oceans as a way of communicating of how cultures and civilizations have, have communicated and have influenced each other. Um, we want as far as possible to get away from the idea of um, of um, essentialized, purified objects, that this object is quintessentially Indian. We want to look at the biography of those objects, look at the influences, look at the context in which they were used, and look at how they came over to, uh, to, 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 to Vancouver. So the areas are arranged, um, the Eastern Pacific basically is, nor is Northwest Coast. Um, the Western Pacific includes um, a lot of the Asian collections from the Far East, um, from, um, uh, and also from the Pacific Islands. Um, we, from there we go into the Indian Ocean, which includes India, Sri Lanka, uh, East Africa, and then into the Atlantic Ocean, which includes Europe, West Africa and North Africa, uh, the Caribbean uh, and Latin America, and then back out through the Arctic Ocean, which includes um, Canadian uh, Arctic material, uh, a little bit of Greenlandic and uh, a little bit of uh, Alaskan. So what we're trying to do is actually we've so we've we, we we've in a way kind of come full circle in many ways. And what we're trying to do is actually show the world and the relationship between the world uh, and and Vancouver. As I say, we um, we we decided to call we decided to. Um, uh, move away from the word anthropology and what we will be using is ac the acronym MOA and then underneath a place of world arts and cultures. Um, a couple of weeks ago I was away from here and um, uh, Jennifer Webb, our, um, our um, communication manager, sent me some um, new pamphlets and said, well, what do you think about this design? 
And underneath it said, uh, Vancouver's contemporary, and we felt contemporary was a really important word, Museum of World Arts and Cultures. And I sat down, I thought about this a bit, and I thought, let's go for the jugular, let's be Canada's. And so we're now kind of going to bill ourselves as Canada's. And uh, this is partly aspirational, but as I say, there aren't a lot of other examples in Canada, and I think we can become a leading institution in that.